about 75 or 80 uh, that we can do. I think last year we did about 73 or 74, so uh, I think we're in, in good shape as far as uh, that goes. But you know, whatever whatever shakes out, it's, it's going to work out just fine for us. Uh, things are going to be bumpy, guys. We're uh, we're in a uh, a season of confusion, a season of West is not going away. We're not going anywhere. We will continue uh, to have worship and we will continue uh, to be present and to meet needs. Your, uh, your bulletin this morning says that Joetta is uh, going to pray and I know as much as you would rather her do it than me, uh, I'm going to lead us in prayer this morning, but I'm also going to tell you that it's going to sound, I'm going to lead you in a uh, rousing rendition of happy birthday uh, as it is her birthday today so uh, you bring to us and, and, and Lord we ask that you would give us um, wisdom we ask for your wisdom to make it through difficult times we ask for your presence uh, to help us remove fear from our, to, to those who are struggling and, and, and having to deal with uh, the, the, the COVID virus with uh, bronchitis with pneumonia with with a, with a cold um, these things can all weigh physically and emotionally on, on those in our community. We pray right now, special prayer over uh, Christy. Uh, he is uh, battling uh, his uh, physical issues, and that, Lord, you would bring about a, another round of healing for him. Uh, and there are so many others, Lord, that, that who need to hear your, your voice speaking into their circumstances. Uh, and, Lord, we, we know that at this point in time, uh, you are listening hear our prayers and you know our hearts and we lift these concerns up to you and we pray your hand upon Christ Church Pueblo West, Lord, that you would use us in a mighty way uh, to reach into this community to, to change hearts and lives and to guide and direct people to Jesus Christ. And it's in his name that God's people are sown and try not to have feedback come out of the speaker. <laughs>
Still my soul will sing your praise unending. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. Oh my soul, I'll worship the Some do it on the way in, some do it on the way out. Whatever works for you, it works for us. So we're grateful for all of that. Let's pray over that. Lord, we are so grateful for all of the things that you bless us with, for it all comes from you, no matter what it is. Uh, the food that we eat, the clothes that we wear, the homes that we live in, uh, our entire uh, resource-filled life is something that is provided for us by you. And Lord, we ask that you would uh, humbly receive, that we would we look forward to being a part of the big plan. We look forward to being a part of your, your, your love for others. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so it is this time that if you are wanting to come hang out up here with me, and trust me, we're going to do something kind of cool and fun. And I'm looking at the Velasquez kids because you're basically the only ones here. Uh, so if you guys want to come up and, and hang out, I got some stuff over here. We're talking about hammer and nails today. So um, there's going to be some, uh, some hammering, some nails, that sort of a thing. Yeah, does that look good on you? Go ahead and give it a shot. Nice. Okay. Get over there. Over there. Now these, I guess you can put one of those on too. Okay. We're all about safety at Christ Church. Okay. So put on the, the there you go. Let's see how those look for you. Oh, perfect. Yours. Okay, these have old people glasses. Okay, so what happens is I put these on, and now I can see it. Yeah, they, who knew that they make bifocal? That's what we got here. So, raise your hand if you know what you're looking at. What is that? Hang on, you know what? I got it. I'll be right back. Okay, what is that? Yes, yeah, it's wood, and what are these called? Do you know what those are called? Boots. Yeah, let's go with nails. Say nails. Yeah. Perfect. So those are nails. This is wood. And is um, is there something that happened here already? Were these nails, did, they, did, did this tree grow up with those nails in it? No. No, no probably not. Huh? So something had to have put those nails there, right? Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Thank you. You don't know? What do you think it was? Um, okay, okay. standing right in front of you guys, okay? Right here. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. What we got, what we've got here is we've got some nails that I already started, and I want you guys, I put them in there for you already, so they're a little bit down into the wood already, aren't they? They aren't there yet, yeah, they are. And so that means that they've been started. Something has already happened, they've already started to move. And so now I want each of you to take them. Good. They get it straight, okay? Excellent. Perfect. Okay. Now let's give it to your sister and let her try. 
hang on, she's going to get the helmet. We wouldn't want anything to hit her in the head. Pick one, go ahead. Excellent. Oh, there we go. <laughs> No, the second one. Go back to the one your sister was, was pounding on. Maybe either one. And then hit the one she was pounding on. Why? I'm going to tell you in a minute. Thank you for asking. Yes. That one. Yeah, there you go. Keep going. Keep going harder. Nice. Okay, good. All right. Now, let me have you take this one more time. Same one. Right there in the middle. Terrific. All right, you can stop. All right, so here's the deal. When we talk about when we talk about God, He's got work for us to do. Do you know that God has work for you? Yeah. He has. Did you, you did you knew that? Yeah. Yeah, you knew that. And so God wants you to do to do some work. But did you know that somebody else may have already started the work that He's got for you to do? Did you know that? Mm -hmm. You didn't know that. Good, because you guys are way smarter than me. But the, if we look at this and you see that somebody started something, then what can we do? Can we do more to that thing? Can we make, make more work on that particular thing if somebody already started it for us? Yes. Yes, we can. And God wants us to do that. What he says is, I want you to add to what somebody else has already started. And you know, the person who actually started the work for us, his name is Jesus. Mm. All right? And so Jesus came and he started the work. And he did something that got everything wrong. All right? And he wants us to keep the work going by continuing to build on what he did. And what does that mean? That means that we take what Jesus did and we teach it to other people. We build on it. Just like builders. Just like people who work a little more, the next person a little bit more. All right? So that's what Jesus wants us to do. He wants us to be builders. Did you know that Jesus came and he wants us to build something? Oh, that's a harder question. Sorry. Was it in a game or on, on a, in a book? You might have heard the word kingdom. Yeah, no? How about you? Have you heard the word kingdom before? Yeah. Yeah. And so a kingdom is, is something where there's somebody who is a what? A king. Isn't that kind of cool? There's a kingdom, there's a king. Yeah? Oh, you don't know? Huh? No. No. Okay. Well, I think it's really cool. And the king says, I want you to help me build my kingdom. All right? His kingdom. When God comes to us, he says, I sent Jesus to get things started. I'm asking you to help out with the building. And when, some, when you're done with your building, somebody will come along after you and continue the work that you already started to. All right? All right. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for these amazing young people. Thank you for the opportunity to be a part of building what it is you're going to be building in and through each of us, through this church body, in this community. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, if you uh, leave the uh, hard hat and the glasses on the stools, that would be awesome. And you guys are released to go have a seat. Thank you so much for coming up and hanging out with me. Sure, you can clap for Do such a great job. <laughs> Not exactly where you would want to walk out of a door, is it? <laughs> Some of those photos that we're looking at had me thinking, now look at this one. This one is interesting. I, I'm, I'm picturing the, the, parks, the parks employee who said, yeah, really? I'm going to teach you. I'll show you. I'm going to put the gate where I want it, not where you put the concrete. Okay? And then this one. That would be quite the staircase to get up and down, don't you think? And then finally... Yeah, they want, that one doesn't even, you know. <laughs> the least bit on purpose. You can't, you can't make a mistake like that that isn't on purpose. That's such, such a, a, a crazy re, 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 redo of something that you just can't. Some rules, uh, and they told us to put it here, fine, this is where we're putting it. Instead of explaining it's not going to work, we need to refigure. They just went and did, all right? That's like the guy who, who was the, uh, the, right, yeah. Well, good morning. And if you are new to Christ Church of Pueblo West, either in person or online, this is a terrific time to be here. And if you're not, it's still a terrific time to be here because this morning we're going to talk about what it is that's going on here at Christ Church Pueblo West and why as a church body 
the body of Jesus Christ, we are here in Pueblo West. Right here at 1099 South McCulloch Boulevard West. And honestly, this is one of the favorite things that I like to talk about when I get a chance uh, to uh, come before you and guess exactly what is that? Well, you see, we're in the business of building. We are in the process of a building project. We right here at Christ Church Pueblo West are builders. Oh, it may not be what you're thinking. We are kingdom builders. Well, and how do we do that? Well, we build the kingdom by building relationships. By, by building relationships. And what is that? What do you mean by building relationships? Well, let me ask you this. Who is it that you listen to? Do you listen to people that you have never met? Or this is very, very true. It says that people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. The Gospel of Matthew we're told of a meeting between Jesus and an expert in the law, a lawyer. Matthew 22, starting at verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the Pharisees got together. One of them, an expert in the law, the lawyer, soul him with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and prophets hang on these two selves. Well, then... We're wanting to do things that show our neighbors how much we care. Love God and love our neighbors. You've seen that before. That's what we're called to do. So what does that look like? What's that look like around here? Well, you know, there are churches that are basically social clubs. Some of you may have been to one or two of them. And a church like that, if they focus more on themselves. You commonly hear a reference to that where somebody will say, well, that church is us for and no more. And that's kind of the model. Churches like that are basically full of what we might call Pharisees today. They are only concerned about themselves. And you might look at it this way. They're turned in. And what I mean by that is if you picture the congregation all standing in a circle, they would all be facing in, looking across at each other with no idea what's going on outside the circle. And I can no one is to seek his own good, but rather the good of the other person. And I believe that if a group of followers of Jesus come together, and they're, they're called then not to see their own good, but the good of others, well, if you have a group of people that are called to that same thing, wouldn't that group in and of itself then be predisposed to be paying attention to others? And if we considered this building, this church, a club, and we say, we, meaning followers of Jesus, we would say that we are the only club that puts a priority on benefiting those members who are not yet here. Now, hear me. I do, I do believe with all my heart that we need as a body to study God's word, to encourage each other, but we need to be doing that with a mind that that teaching and that encouragement guides us into the lives of others who have yet to hear the pastor and elder to do something scripturally. Paul writes in Ephesians chapter 4, the apostles, prophets, the evangelists, the shepherds, el which are elders, the teachers, which you might call pastors, who are to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ. There it is, that word, build. You see, Wayne Payne and I are here to equip you to help you build. I'm trying to teach and encourage you to take what you learn here, what you would learn in a Bible study, either online or in person, and go and make disciples. Go and make disciples. That's what Jesus commands us to do, to be a part of that message that Jesus gives us in the Gospel of Matthew. It's called the Great Commission. Now, in the Old Testament, there's a book that's named for a prophet, and this prophet's name is Haggai. It isn't a very long book. It's just two chapters long. And in those two chapters, the main topic is the temple. So, Haggai chapter 1, verse 2. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. The people are saying the time has not yet come to rebuild the house of the Lord. Then the Lord sent this message through the prophet Haggai. Why are you living in luxurious houses while my house lies in ruins? This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. 
You have planted much, but harvest little. You must. This is what the Lord of Heaven's army says. Look at what's happening to you. Now go up into the hills, bring down timber, and rebuild my house. Then I will take pleasure in it and be honored, says the Lord. You hoped for rich harvests, but they were poor. All of you are busy building your own fine houses. It's because of you that the heavens withhold the dew and the earth produces no crops. I have called for a drought on your fields and hills, a drought to wither the, the grain and grapes and olive trees and all your other crops, a drought to starve you and your lives tatters. Because while we may not necessarily need a work day here at Christ Church Bubba West at the building, it's a matter of priorities. You see, the Israelites of Haggai's day were putting their material, God was telling them. They were installing swimming pools, man caves, and three chariot garages instead of taking care of the temple. Now, those things in and of themselves are bad things unless they take a priority over that which the Lord calls us to do. We need to make being obedient to God our top priority. Amen. Just like a young person would want to be obedient to their parents because it makes everything else easier. <laughs> you see, the Israelites of Haggai's day were putting their material needs ahead, and it wasn't working out for them. God realized what was going on. Now, there's a contrast here. There's another guy that I want to tell you about. His name is Nehemiah. Nehemiah, he got it. He understood. You see, God put upon his heart to go and rebuild the walls around his hometown of Jerusalem, walls that had been destroyed by fire and city. While he was there, many people in the area who were not Jews, by the way, were against this work. They were against the work that Nehemiah had come to do. Nehemiah knew what God was calling him to do, and he remained focused upon the work that he had been tasked to complete. At one point, some pesky fellows were sending Nehemiah letters, kind of like us texting somebody, in hopes that they could distract him and get him to focus on the threats that they were uh, throwing his way instead of finishing the work that Nehemiah had come to do. And his response is a response that I think we all need to hear. This is Nehemiah, and he says, And I sent messengers to them saying, I am doing a great work, and I cannot come down. Why should the work stop while I leave it and come down to you? I am doing a great work and I cannot come down. If you don't go home with anything today, but one thing, take that. God's work, work for God, is important work that we should not be turned away from. You see, the idea is that when we're working as unto the Lord, we need to focus on that task at hand. We need to make it a priority and not be distracted from completing the work he has put upon our hearts. The leadership of this particular church is here to equip you. And You've been working hard right here in Pueblo West. As a church body, we're working to build relationships by meeting needs and getting to know our neighbors. Let me give you a few examples. Blessing bags. This past week, we got together with some great kids. Impact Youth got re-kicked off, and blessing bags got made. They are a great way to share God's love and His Word when we're able to put some Scripture into the bags with those who come up, we come across who are in need. They're a terrific way to engage people, to open doors to a conversation, to a relationship. And it is a fantastic way for you to get involved. And that's why we have some out on the table. Grab one on your way home. Next, we're moving on to teacher appreciation by teachers in our local schools. They're fantastic teachers. They're going through a really hard time with kids getting sick, teachers getting sick, coming and going back and forth, and, and then administrators not having a clue as to whether their schools should be open or closed or what's going on. And it gives us an opportunity to be a part of facilitating a parent and a, and a student's love for their teacher. Next, in June, we will once again team up with put together a team, and I saw that uh, uh, Diana has her shirt on this morning, and I like what you see here in the picture. Team Jesus is going to come back, so if you're interested, uh, you know, stay tuned, because we'll let you know. The, the Walk for Life is a fundraising event for the Caring Pregnancy Center, and last year, uh, our small little team uh, raised several thousand dollars, and it was a fantastic time. We had an opportunity to be a part of what 
the pregnancy center is doing in Pueblo, we can see apologize for that. Okay. Next, girl time. We don't, we don't, which we don't have. Imagine girls talking. <laughs> the community are welcome, and they can come and be loved on. You don't have to be a member of Christ Church. You don't even have to be a follower of Jesus. We're just about building relationships and having fellowship with our community. We use other opportunities to build here in Pueblo West also. Other things that we do are things like, uh, and this is going to come up again, we will be doing a vacation Bible school this summer. We're going to do vacation Bible school. We have a blessing box out front. We have a reverse rummage sale that we do in the fall. You, you've heard about our trunk or treat, our drive through Santa. All of these different activities are things that we are doing to be intentional about engaging the people in our community who come out to take advantage or to take part. We do building in those ways and other ways. On Thursday evenings, we have our youth group. They come together. We build through young people. And I am a firm believer that the church body, all hyped up for when they get to be adult age, they can do it now. It isn't something that we wait for. It isn't something that only happens where when you're out of high school, kids can make a difference. They can and they do change the world. And they can do it right now. They can be kingdom builders just as much as you and I can. And I can tell you, quite honestly, I want to help them do it. Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27 says this. Everyone then who hears these words of mine, Jesus speaking, does them and he will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and it beat on that house, but it did not fall, because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell. And a great and great was the fall. So you see, while kids can be kingdom builders, it is up to us, the generations who have come before these young people, to teach them where to build, to teach them how to build, to teach them to build on the rock and not on the sand. Because when we come alongside young builders and share the wisdom that our years of building have given us, they have a much better chance of succeeding, a much better chance of being a part of God's blueprint for the kingdom. Now, I truly believe that God puts things on our hearts for a reason. He gives us dreams. He gives us desires and passions that we can use for the kingdom. And that's every single one of us. That's you. God planted something on my heart years ago that I really had no idea what to do with. And God was guiding me and directing me to where I am today. And he has put me in a place where not only can I more clearly see the vision he's given me? But now I have people around me who share in the same vision for reaching this community. For example, let me tell you a little bit about that soccer field out there, the Jerry Young field, who we want to be to Pueblo West. He's a guy who loves everybody. He loved people like no other. He is the guy who set the standard for somebody like me. I needed to have a Jerry Young in my life, and I was blessed to have some time with this Jerry Young. And so Jerry gave us the, how did that all work out? Well, the, the land that it's on when I came here wasn't didn't belong to the church. It was just the next piece of property over. And it came up for sale, or actually Mark Vincent, uh, the chairman of our board of trustees, found out that it was for sale, and, and he felt like he was being led to us purchasing it. God was working in and through Mark. And so we did. And we bought that piece of property. It ended up being a place where we had Easter egg hunts. We went and did some VBS activities on that property. But most of all, uh, we mowed weeds. That's what we did most on that, on that acre was we cut weeds. Great. And then, about a year ago, Christy Cooper, our worship leader, came up with an idea as to what to do with the, that piece of property. Why don't you, why don't we, and then she throws an idea out there, and I was like, why not? Exactly. Let's pray about this. And we did. We prayed and prayed and prayed, and we, we started to talk about it. We, we got to the Board of Trustees. God had been 
speaking into their hearts because not only when we came to them and said, what about this? They said, well, let's take it a step further and make it even better. And it was like, wow, amazing. And it's just because we're in tune, in touch, and listening to what God is doing. And so now we have this field out there. And it's going to be an open door. We've already seen that, that it's something that people are excited about. We have heard so many times people say, oh, is that your church, the one with that new field that I drove by? I saw them working on it, and I've seen it finished, and it looks great. And now we're going to be able to have activities on it. We're going to invite people from the community. God keeps bringing things together. He keeps making things work. He keeps making things happen. And he's directing us how to build. You see, each of us is directed to be a builder. But why would we want to build something great for God? Well, I'm glad you asked. Because in my studying for this message, I came across a list of reasons compiled by a pastor named Dudley Rutherford, who pastors a church out in the, in the California area, in Southern California, and it pretty much hits the nail on the head. Number one, God is worthy of our best. In Malachi chapter 1, God's people broke the covenant by offering blemished sacrifices back to him. Imagine this. If your mom gave you, and you said, sure, but you gave her all of the bruised and half-rotten ones, how would that make her feel? She being the one who not only gave you the orange tree, but also the one who gave you life. God has given us everything that we have. And sometimes we give him back our leftovers, our worst, or nothing at all. God really is worthy of our best. Number two, God has done great things. Lights. Who does not change like the shifting shadows? God has done so much for us. He has given us life. He's given us health, the ability to work and enjoy our free time. He has given you and your family your freedom, your job, food to eat, and clean water to drink every single day. And on top of all of this, God gave you the ultimate gift, his son, his son Jesus, who died for your sins. For God so loved the world. The Lord has done great things about anything. Revelation chapter 3 tells us, I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot, Jesus speaking. I wish you were either one or the other, so because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Wow. God wants us, you see, to be on fire for him, to be passionate for his holy character, his word, for his heart, and to serve him and the eternal life that are available through his son, Jesus Christ. Number four. To whom much is given, much is required. This only makes sense. We must regularly ask ourselves, what am I doing with the blessings, the time, the talents, the treasure that God has given to me? Am I using it to serve him and to bless others? Luke 12 says, from everyone who has been given much, much will be demanded. And from the one who has been entrusted with much, much more will be asked. So when things are going well, when things are going well, look for ways to give back. And you know, for us, even on a bad day, for the rest of the world, that's going pretty well. Number five, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And then when we jump to 1 Peter 5, it describes the devil as a prowling, roaring lion who is looking for someone to devour. <laughs> Satan is by the devil. I never want to be outworked by him, so we, I, we, must keep building and working so that our lives, our faith, will glorify God. And finally, if others will build upon our foundation, then let's build a great foundation. King David was not God's chosen vessel to build his temple. God said no. But in 1 Chronicles we see the incredible, incredible contributions that David gave for the building of God's temple. He didn't actually build it, but he provided the resources. Gold, silver, bronze, precious, precious stones, and more. And then he says in verse 5, Now who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? 
Someone else comes along and builds upon what we have built. You see, David's son, Solomon, ended up doing just that. It's all for God's glory. So guys, look, God will lead to building to great things for God because that's how you build the kingdom. Today, I want to encourage you to use these tools to pick them up and to start building. Join in the building that's going on right here. Your efforts will not go unnoticed. And they will lead, believe it or not, to salvation for others. They will lead to blessings for you. And they will lead to glory for God. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for providing us with the opportunity to be one of your builders. For you, Let me cut the lumber. Let me build a foundation. A foundation that can maybe be built on by people coming behind me but that foundation, Lord, that foundation will be rooted in you. Please give us guidance and direction. Please pour your blessings out upon our young people as they that Jesus Christ has come and he's coming back. He has given us an opportunity to have eternal life and salvation and forgiveness of sins. When we turn away from those sins into you, Lord, when we turn away from our sins and repent of them and ask Jesus Christ into our hearts. Help us, Lord, to teach that to others, to build them up, encourage them, and see what comes as they, too, become builders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so at this point, if you have one of the communion cups, we're going to move into our communion real quick and bring in a connection with Jesus Christ who says, in remembrance of me, I ask that you would remember me when you do this. And so this morning, we're going to do just that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, <coughs> excuse me, it's 1 Corinthians chapter 3, the Apostle Paul is writing, and he said the foundation, and someone else, someone else is building upon it. Let each one take care how he builds upon the foundation, how he builds upon it. For no one, verse 11, for no one can lay a foundation other than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. See, Jesus Christ is that foundation, and nobody can put down any other foundation for the church. Put another way, the church will not stand on any foundation besides Jesus Christ. The gospel, the good news from God about salvation from sin, it starts and ends with faith in Jesus. Right. Nothing can be added to it or taken from it. The message stops being the gospel if that happens. Verse 12, now if anyone builds on a foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will be, become manifest for the day will disclose it because it will be revealed. All has left the scene. New builders have come in to continue the construction. These builders are the teachers and the leaders of the church in Corinth. Paul begins an if-then statement in this verse, and he says, Continuing the building metaphor, he describes various materials. These builders, those who lead the Corinthians to grow in Christ, might use these particular materials to continue the building project. But the question is, will they use quality building materials, such as gold, silver, and precious stones? Will they build using sturdy, valuable, resilient stock, which would result in a robust and strong structure? Or will they use wood? hay and straw, cheap, easily acquired and inferior materials in order to quickly raise walls that cannot stand the test of time. What makes for good or poor building materials? In this case, teaching about Christ that is true and helpful would be quality material for growing the church. Teaching that distorts the message of Christ or waters down the truth, that's the cheap stuff. This done has been built on the foundation and it survives. That which is built with the good materials, well, he will receive a reward. Verse 15, if anybody's work is burned up, he will suffer loss. Though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. What we do makes a difference. God asks us to give our best all the time. Whether it is our time, our talents, or our resources. Not the leftovers, 
not the bruised and rotted oranges, but the best that we have. And when we do that, we can't help but succeed and receive rewards and blessings. The foundation of our church family, and we build upon him each and every time we come together, each and every time we share the good news, we continue to build upon that foundation. And this morning as we take of the bread, may we remember that you were willing to step up and to step out and to take a punishment to being a part of your plan, to being a part of creating what you've given us to do and making it work in such a way that your Holy Spirit moves freely in and through us and whatever building appears, that lives may be changed for all of eternity. In Jesus' name we pray. And so when we consider the cup, and we consider what Jesus was willing to sacrifice for us, shouldn't it encourage us, shouldn't it motivate us to want to be able to give on the same sort of a level, on the same level, we tend to kind of quench that spirit, and, and we tend to go and do what the flesh would have us to do. We tend to, to live the life that the world around us expects from us, instead of being completely and totally faithful and connected to who Christ is and what he did for us. So as we take of the cup this morning, may we remember the fact that Jesus was willing to give it all. And that should mean something to each and every one of us. Lord, we are so grateful that you went to the cross. We're so grateful that you took our sins with you and that you cleansed us, that the, the blood that you spilled was what makes us clean, what takes and washes away all of the infirmity because of the work of Christ on the cross. May we commit to putting our noses to the grindstone in building your kingdom everywhere we go. A little love poured through us into the lives of others. In his name we pray. Amen. So if you'll bear with us, I think we're going to close with a one more worship song. 94% of people believe company culture, and I believe that's about what we're doing here. Go ahead and see. Oh, I see many saints.
worship requires us, and I think, you do it twice, honey? She had to restart the computer things in order the way we're used to doing it. And so I'm, I'm very grateful for, for all that she does. I want you to know that, that I, I, I'm just the guy who talks. She's the one who does everything. Uh, and so uh, I'm. Oh, it's coming on the twenty-first. Oh, okay. So today it'll be between. It'll be. Between, well, it'll be. Between. We're gonna we're gonna do a preeminent strike since the next time we come. Happy birthday! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday to you! Happy birthday, dear Joanna! Thank you so much, everybody, for being here this morning and really being here. And if you still have a hole in your heart, the size and shape of the Holy Spirit, let's talk about that because it's a great opportunity to invite Him to move in to be a part of you. Do like the Green Bay Packers are doing today. Rest. <laughs>